Hey guys, welcome back to customcomputing.ca. Uh, sorry for the delay in the update. Uh, a lot has happened since the last update. I had a client build log, uh, Project Glacier, which I'm really proud of. It turned out great. Uh, it was pretty much well everything that I wanted it to be. Uh, it was an exciting build that I hadn't done before uh, with Mayhem's Pastel, along with uh, the um, Bay Res and uh, the color scheme, the blue and white. I really liked it. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I'm really happy with how it ended up. Uh, a lot of stuff has been uh, preventing me from doing this update, uh, mainly because it's summer in Canada, and we only have a couple of months of beautiful weather, so it's very hard to justify staying in the basement while it's beautiful outside. So <clears throat> I did get around to getting a few things. Unfortunately, um, there was a few bumps along the way. Uh, this was because finances... Uh, the equipment that I want to use is really expensive. I'm using two uh, 780 Ti's and uh, each of those are around 700 bucks as well as I did a leak test on one of the rads and it was uh, leaking so I had to get another rad and then I had to repaint it so let's start off where we ended up uh, we're repainting the radiators and the coloring so Okay, so as I was explaining earlier, unfortunately the EK rad ended up having a leak in it and I'm really glad that I tested it before I actually had it installed and everything was in a, you know, put away. I've had uh, some issues with the EK rads. Uh, this will probably be the last time that I choose EK. Uh, I know Singularity is always uh, spouting EK this, EK that, but I think there's a lot of other uh, companies that are coming up and really making a name for themselves. XSPC is definitely one of them. Their new RAD lineup is really good and uh, I love the looks of them. Um, EK definitely has been around for a while but they've also had their issues. Um, after I realized there was a leak I wasn't able to get a different RAD. The reason why I selected these two RADs was because they fit literally to a millimeter, um, maybe maximum two uh, in the case. So. I wasn't able to find another rad that had the same height as this EK rad as well as the same thickness. It's a thick rad and I wanted to put it in push-pull. Um, the new paint job that I did on it is actually better than the original, uh, of course, because it's the second time I've done it and uh, it looks fantastic with the gloss black and the gold. So at the end of the last build log I said I was going to delid the 4770K. I ended up watching a ton of YouTube videos, reading up a ton of forums, uh, was extremely nervous. It's a $300 CPU and um, I didn't want to destroy it. Uh, pretty much well the vice method was the only way to go. Um, essentially you just make sure that uh, the CPU block, the, the uh, heat sink is uh, in the vice grip and when you put a pressure on it, you're just putting the pressure on the actual green part, which is the CPU. If you've looked into this, I'm sure you've seen several people do this. If you have it correct, it's uh, fairly simple. Uh, you got to make sure that the CPU doesn't fly off and onto the ground or something like that and chip. That would, that would also be terrible. But uh, in this case, I had padding down and I uh, was extremely careful and uh, it came off with a fair bit of a charm. Once I had the top off, it was relatively self-explanatory what needed to be done. Uh, there's quite a bit of gunk on uh, both bits, the uh, TIM and the uh, CPU portion. I ended up having to get a uh, cool laboratory liquid. Uh, this was supposed to be the best for overclocking and best for delitting processors. Um, it's very expensive and you don't get very much but my hopes were that I was going to be able to save enough uh, to do the CPU and two graphics cards with this because it is so expensive and it is so uh, renowned for overclocking and temperatures. After you clean it off and apply the Tim it's pretty simple. Um, literally you just toss it back on. Uh, you don't have to glue it back on at all. You just put it back on and then you put your uh, CPU block on so we're gonna go take a look at that as well now the CPU block I used is EK's gold supremacy um, it's a clean CSQ so there's no frosting or anything uh, I had to choose between the um, water filters so there's three 
uh, different filters through uh, the CPU block. You can use a uh, AMD or Intel optimized, or I think like a generic one. It comes with one that's generic. Uh, in order for you to uh, put in the optimized one, you have to actually take it off and put in the other. I'm not too sure what it's called. It's a, it's a, sort of a filter of some sort. Uh, basically, it adjusts the pressures of the water going through the CPU block. So the higher the pressure, obviously, the faster the water is going through. Uh, and I guess they're for different uh, CPUs. So I had to look up a few tutorials on how to do this properly, as well as which were the best for the Intel socket that I was using. This isn't a easy thing to do. Uh, you actually have to look at the reviews and, and, and look up online to see exactly how to do this properly because if you don't do it right you can really screw up the block. Uh, the water flow will actually get stuck and it'll, it'll blow up your whole system pretty much well. The, I also purchased a, uh, a different filter if you will. I thought it was um, the new and improved version of it but uh, apparently I asked on the forums and they said no no you have to go with the the Intel uh, premium block so that's what I did here um, I just made sure that it was using the optimized for my chipset and uh, once you just replace that um, then ensure that the water flow is actually going to go in the right direction and you can put that CPU block onto your delitted CPU so uh, I'll take the time now while I put this in fast forward so you can see me putting on the block. Uh, but there's a lot of little things that go into modding that is not really seen on the outside. You know, delitting a CPU is one thing, but um, you know, going as far as to affect every single piece of the computer, you know, right from the CPU onwards is is something that takes up so much time and so much detail that a lot of people don't see. Um, so you need to you need to take a lot of pride in your work as well as you have to love what you're doing. Um, you know the feeling of of when this this is all completed really makes it worthwhile for me and especially if it's for a client that you know is really excited about the build and I put everything I can into it then I can make sure that. I put absolutely everything I have into this so um, this is a build that's supposed to demonstrate everything that I can do and I want this to be my flagship build for hopefully a future company uh, which means doing all the little details that I would expect out of a premium computer uh, with premium parts at a premium cost so hopefully this uh, explains a little bit as to why I'm doing all these little things at such detail. After I installed the CPU block I colored the IO shield of the motherboard which now then completes the modding for the motherboard. It really stands out uh, when you do something small like this. The, the manufacturers for these motherboards go so far to make such a beautiful color scheme. At the same time they don't take a little time to make the IO shield either the same color or even a black, a black just to get it out of the way. I use um, Plasti Dip on the IO shield. You know, I had to cover off all the other areas, but it makes it so much cleaner, nicer, and it doesn't draw your attention away from the actual components that are supposed to be uh, drawing your attention in the first place. So I'm really happy that I was able to get the I.O. shield done as well as put the CPU block on uh, a delitted processor. So when we left off in the last build, I was doing uh, a revamp of every item that I had test fitted. Uh, basically, repaint everything. Uh, if there's screws, we're going to uh, repaint all the screws and uh, put lacquer on just for protection coats. As well, I was doing a mod to the um, reservoir holder to have bigger uh, button head screws. So this is the final coat for those, as well as I had to redo all of the um, 
fans uh, in order to make sure that it was a good gloss that matched with the uh, the fan blades. I know I went through this in the last um, update, but it really upsets me when I see uh, companies that are so half-assed in their aesthetic department. You know, Noctua just came out with uh, a couple new colored fans. They've been making the same fans for years, and only now have they uh, started to change the colors a little bit. I mean, they have a terrible puke brown, and uh, they come out with two new colors, and the two new colors they come out with are absolutely hideous. You know, they may as well not have even come out with them. If you're going to construct a fan a certain way and not change the construction of it, it's not very hard to change the color of it. So, as you can see, this uh, right here is showing the difference between the painted fan that I did with a stock fan. You can see the difference, uh, especially when you look at the blades. The blades don't match up at all with the stock fans. They're the same color as the paint that I did, but it's a very different color when you compare it to uh, the stock. See, the it doesn't really show it as much there as it can, but when you put it on top of a rad, it really shows the difference in blacks. So I'm really happy that I was able to paint these. Um, they're expensive fans. Uh, the the noise blocker uh, NB3s, uh, PK3s. Um, as well as I painted the GTX 780 Ti um, GPU IO shields, which is also a very important detail um, when you're modding. And speaking of 780 Ti's, this is why it took so long for me to get this updated. Um, these are extremely expensive cards. I was very lucky to have gotten them uh, in a shorter amount of time at a reasonable price if you I was seriously contemplating just going with two 780s uh, because the price difference is you know two hundred dollars or something like that but I was lucky enough to get these two cards for a reasonable price that were never used uh, brand new cards and uh, no taxes because taxes in Canada are 13 percent um, no shipping costs I got it online so lucky I was able to find these two cards that at a low price where I was able to justify the purchasing of them because ultimately this build is more for aesthetics and to showcase what I'm capable of doing I'm never going to use this much power uh, in my daily use um, now along with the fan rant uh, one thing that um, you know card companies need to take into account is that they're coming out with nicer fan bases, nicer back plates and whatnot, but again the IO shield sticks out so much. Um, a big silver, uh, you can see this huge silver IO shield here against the black which doesn't match up at all and when you put that into a case you can see the big silver uh, sticking out next to all the black. In this G-Force case, it's not as bad because it sort of goes with the the fan blade there. It's uh, silver and silver. But um, I just feel as though there needs to be a little bit more quality control in their aesthetics departments. So along with those two purchases, I uh, had to swallow another heavy pill on uh, the water blocks and the um, backplate cooler, actually. Uh, the water blocks I chose were Bits Power, uh, by far the most aesthetically pleasing water blocks out there. Um, I really don't like the EK design. I don't like half the block being clear and half the block having silver. Um, their previous design with the circles was just hideous. Uh, this is a full block that uh, covers the entire graphics card. Um, it's as opposed to you know the the uh, EK ones. They don't. They don't cover the entire card as well. These blocks don't have a mounted um, piece to them. It's all in included into one where you uh, put your fittings, so it looks a lot better. Um, the back plates that I used uh, were thermal, uh, thermal designed uh, back plates, and they're made out of like a solid, solid aluminum uh, with extremely thick. Um, 
thick pads, uh, thermal pads. Uh, I'll show you how I put them on momentarily, but this added a significant amount of weight to the cards. The, the cards, each card probably weighs around three pounds each. It's extremely heavy duty. So as you see on these blocks, it's a one piece as opposed to uh, EK and um, XSPC. They all have a second chunk at the top there where the inlets are. It's a big black block usually. Uh, this is all one solid piece that uh, basically just goes across the entire uh, graphics card. It's truly the most beautiful card I've seen, uh, the block I've seen out there, um, and I'm really happy that I paid the extra money for it. Uh, I again use the Coolator Ultra uh, for the TIM to get best performance in uh, overclocking as well as connectivity. Uh, the heat tin. So that should come out fairly good. Not very many people use it for GPU blocks, so maybe I'll be able to do a test run for them. This Bits Power backplate is truly amazing. It's a thermal backplate which has uh, thermal pads that are in between it, and uh, those cooling vents are you blow air through them and it cools down the back end of the card. The back end of this card is truly hideous, and I couldn't imagine anyone spending $750 on a card and not getting a backplate with it. So, this the only thing I changed about this backplate was the screws needed to be painted gold and uh, to get some gold in there, and of course, that's obviously what I was going to do. Uh, next, we'll mount the backplates. So, quickly to show off the gold screws and the actual water block. As you can see it really really adds a lot now that I painted the IO shield. Um, you can see that the block is just absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately you're not going to be able to really see too much of it. It does have LED holes so we'll be making that white I believe. And you can see the IO shield there uh, seamlessly being black. So it really adds a lot to the fact that you can't see um, the IO shield being silver or what have you. Um, the little detail that I did put in, uh, that's that's how thick it is. It's a beast of a card. It weighs probably about three pounds, like I said. But I do like the uh, gold uh, screws that I put in. It adds just a little bit of gold to the back plate. I was going to try and color the Bits Power logo, but I would have just botched it and it would have looked terrible. So. Um, the additional gold color on the back is is all it needed. I don't want to oversaturate this build with gold. There should just be a few uh, a few pieces of gold on on every everything. Uh, with that said, I tried to get some button head screws that would fit in there, but it was going to cost forty dollars um, to get those screws. And to be honest, that's not worth putting another forty bucks in for just screws. So we'll leave them as is, uh, but it does look absolutely gorgeous, and I can't wait to start putting my build back together. So here's the final paint job and the final assembly of the parts. Uh, the final coat of paint has been done on the fans, on the uh, screws, and on the rad. So everything's ready to be put back in, and it's assembled. As you can see, the back plate there has... Uh, provisioned three holes that are along the side of the fans where they connect to the outside so as you can see each fan is lined up perfectly with each one of those holes and they get uh, connected through the back there and you can't even see the connection so that's good um, the second thing that we uh, changed was the button head screws on the res mount I uh, enlarged, el enlarged the holes in order to <clears throat> get the res mount uh, the same type of feel as the other parts with the button head screws and I really really do like the change um, everything now has button head screws including the um, the uh, res and the uh, pump so it's all coming together uh, there's two pieces of uh, silver there that I have to paint but that's uh, none here, none there at this point. Now we get to see those beautiful 780 Ti blocks inside the computer. Um, 
there's really no justice being done by this iPhone camera when you take a look at it. Uh, everything worked out perfect. Every single measurement that I had, that where the res is mounted, where the cables are going to go, the height of the res mount against the height of the graphics cards, everything came down to this one point and it just worked out flawlessly. Um, the acrylic side paneling reflects those beautiful cards as well as when they have a uh, LED in them. Uh, oh, here I am indicating that that black is actually not silver. So it actually looks fantastic and I'm really happy with it. Again, with the IO shield on the motherboard being black, not silver, really changes a lot. Um, I'm beyond excited about how this is turning out. Uh, Every single screw in the system is now button head, uh, which is fantastic. So um, you can see those are button head and the uh, attachments there are button head. Um, there's still a little silver piece there that's going to be painted black, but that's about it. Um, everything else has been fit perfectly. Uh, I even did button head screws on the pump uh, config there, which looks great. You can see to the left, I also created a small. Um, acrylic panel here that it goes across so the wires will actually go underneath it and you won't see the wiring uh, but there was a space there and I didn't like the space so I, I might be mounting uh, some uh, temperature sensors in there but for now it's just going to be a, a block for so you can't see the cabling that's coming up to the USB ports and whatnot um, so I got really excited and uh, ended up putting in some of the lighting. Right there, there's going to be a uh, noise blocker fan. It's it's just being painted right now, so this will be covered up with a uh, another noise blocker fan that'll be gloss. Um, but for the time being, I put in the uh, majority of the lighting. It's still not 100% whether I'm going to keep it this way or not, but it makes it stand out even more so. Um, the shimmering of the gloss, the back of the um, the back of the uh, panel there that I created. Uh, there's going to be a better light on the left hand on the right hand side here. Behind the res is a light that's shining. That when I turn the light off, you'll be able to take a look at see how it actually affects the res. But the white light against the gloss black is extremely is just popping out. Um, I'm so excited how this is turning out. It's turning out exactly the way I wanted it to. Um, this isn't a sponsored build or anything like that. This is my own personal build and I'm not very rich so I take pride in everything that I've purchased. Um, the back plates here, you know, there's, there's really no words at this given point. I just want to show you how beautiful it goes with um, the other gold parts that I've painted and, and the actual the whole thing. Um, the wiring is going to be uh, perfectly aligned custom wiring obviously so don't worry about the current wiring that's in there. I didn't have another power supply. Um, you can see the light light shining against the graphics cards. Uh, the light shining against the power supply. Um, those cables will obviously be customized. I'm hoping to maybe get some form of a sponsor to help me with that because I can't do it. Um, and it's, you know, the cost is just getting up there. That piece of acrylic there, I think I might put some sensors in there, um, but you won't be able to see any of the cables that are coming up underneath it, which is awesome. I think it, it works out really good. I had to sand it and, and everything. Um, the LED lighting on the, the basement looks great. Uh, next up is just, I turned off some of the lights. Um, next up is the acrylic tube and uh, the fittings, those, those are going to be very expensive as well. So stay tuned. I know you guys have waited a long time for this, so stay tuned for more. It's going to be a while before the next update, but as you know, I'm 
attending to every detail and uh, making sure that absolutely everything is 100% and let me know what you think. I really enjoy the comments. I'd really like to start getting a few more people on my channel and uh, taking a look at what I can do and suggestions and I'm just really happy the way it's turning out. So let me know what you think. Rate, subscribe, share it. Uh, I'd really enjoy getting a couple more subscribers. I'm only at 250, I think. Uh, I'd like to hit the thousands by the end of this build if that's possible. But uh, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more, and maybe you'll get another client build in there as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.